for, for, for those people that don't know, when Johnny got into uh, in Formula One, the first year in Formula One, it was against all odds, really, because the, yeah. in, in fairness, the, even the national press were, were bigging up Johnny over as the next British driver to, <laughs> to go into Formula One, and, and, and everything was, was set fair until a fateful weekend that I was at as a spectator, which was horrible, yeah. at Brands Hatch, Formula 3000, big, powerful cars, and a horrible accident, which which, which almost brought that, that, that dream to an end. And yeah. I don't, how many have seen it? How many have seen the crash? It's a bloody yeah. good one, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have a look, because it was pretty mighty. It bloody was. well hurt. Yeah. I know that, it hurt. But yeah, yeah it, was, it was one of those things prior to that race weekend, I was sort of part of the Benetton Junior team, so I had an option anyway for the, for the 89 Season. Oh no, 88, in Formula 3 I got an, an option for the 88 season, but then we went to Formula 3000, then I had an option again for 89. Um, I was, Frank Williams was there uh, on the day of the accident and I was meant to meet uh, Sir Frank after the race, that never happened. The week before I tested for, for Lotus, which Lotus had to ask Benetton if it was okay if I could test, that was when uh, Nelson Piquet was driving, went faster than Nelson Piquet as I left the circuit. Enzo Ferrari's PA wanted to speak to me or spoke to me and said that Enzo wants to meet me uh, as well. So there was suddenly, I always do it like a, a ball. The ball when I started karting was like a marble and it grew and grew and grew and got so big that it was almost like a two, me two meter circle and I'm on top of it. And I, my confidence is so, so high. My driving was probably, you know, still developing, but you know, at a very high level. And of course I'm getting all these people who were wanting a, a, a part of me, and it was just a, a big buzz for yeah, me was, that yeah. all that was sort of happening, and of course then the accident happened itself. But did I think it was over? Weirdly, when I was in hospital, when I first woke up, of course my feet were both sort of bandaged up, and there was sort of on my left foot, there was a lot of sort of blood that was still leaking for a, for a couple of days. So I, although I visually see that, I know when I'm alive, the dream is still there. I had Peter Collins, who was a team manager of Benetton at the time, phoning me up and saying, how's it going? And as the weeks and months went by, he was always sort of saying, you know, how's the foot? And I remember when he moved a millimetre for the first time on my left foot, it was like, it was a big historic day for me. And that was something I sort of relayed to Peter. And then I was still in a wheelchair when I got the call from Peter to say, they're going to take up the option. So that, gave me that drive I needed to say, well, there is a the seat there. Now it's down to me to work damn hard to get myself back in a situation, which I wasn't at that point, to get in, back into a, a race car itself. I believed I could do it. I achieved it to a certain degree. Rio was you know, fantastic for me, but it was just because the track suited the injuries that I had. I'm going to ask you that yes. in a minute. Okay. I'm going to ask you about your first Grand Prix because, it, because <laughs> this story, for those of you that don't know, uh, you may see Johnny talking about Formula 1 drivers in the paddock on the, the fantastic television coverage that we get nowadays. And maybe not know the backstory of Johnny when he was in Formula 1, but this was this was against all odds that you got into Formula 1. You nearly lost your foot. I mean, very, very close to losing your Well, the left one was, I think, uh, Eddie Jordan, when he turned up with Adrian Reynard, who was designing it when they turned up. Yeah, the, the boot had got taken off, and it was just, my sock was still was still on, but it was just hanging off by a little bit of skin on on the left leg. And the other Crazy. one looks like I could do mono skin, water skin, I think, on this foot, because it looks like a monkey's foot. My heel's round the side, it's quite flat and wide, so it's... It's got its purpose. But you can walk. You can, I can walk. Well, I sort of hobble. Yes, you, I hobble you, around. Is it painful now? Yes. Is it? I just took some pills just after a On a so. daily basis, you're in pain. Yeah, I've got my little sort of magnet bracelet that I wear. Mojo, it's called. Wow. A bit of arthritis. Who's got arthritis? Give your mojo a go. It does work. So does it, it works work? for me. Yeah. Steve Sober, he had, he had a big crash and yes, damaged his neck. He wears one now and it's actually helped him. So He's got carbon fibre in his neck. I'm not an ambassador for them at no, all, no, but no, it no. works for but if, but if it works. It does work. It works. So there's, there is a lot of pain sort of every day, but it's something I accept as well. That's, I, think, I wish it hadn't happened, it did happen, and then you just you have to carry on with 
the situation that you've got and I was very lucky like you said to get that chance into Formula 1 but that goes back to Peter Collins if it wasn't for Peter I don't think anybody would have touched me with a large problem well, you did have a huge amount of natural talent behind the wheel of a, yeah. of a single season but would it happen today? no no it's, and that's how it's changed as well the, the ultimate F1 driver can't have any negative physical aspect and I had a physical issue that was sort of realistically holding me back but I still had a career that I had those three races that I, that I wanted or that I that I had it wasn't what I wanted because I always was a world championship so but sadly that was never never going to be